Today, I'm going to show you something way cooler than MidJourney. And I know that's a bold statement. And if you're not familiar with MidJourney, what it is is an artificial intelligence stable diffusion website that allows you to connect to Discord and generate some amazing pieces of artwork like this. Some of this stuff is just absolutely stunning. But one of the primary problems with this is it is not free. You actually have to pay a monthly subscription for this. And on top of that, you have limited number of images that you can create based on the subscription plan. You can see that based on the plans, it goes anywhere from free trial with very limited resources all the way up to a $60 a month pro plan, which offers 30 hours a month of fast GPU time and 12 concurrent jobs. But I can tell you just from the past couple weeks of playing around with Stable Diffusion, I probably spend that much time just in a single day. So let's find a better way and jump right into it. So what I'm going to show you here today is how to run MidJourney actually as a local service on your own PC so you can generate unlimited free images. And this is based on training data off of actual MidJourney images. So the results should be very similar to what you get with MidJourney. The main difference being, of course, that you don't have to pay for it. Now, in order for this to work, you need to have already followed my tutorial on setting up automatic 1111 on your local Windows machine. If you haven't done that, be sure to check it out after this video so that you can follow along. And with that out of the way, we're going to take you over to Hugging Face. Hugging Face is an amazing website that has a whole bunch of different training data sets, models, and everything else you can use for stable diffusion. The best part is I found this Open Journey. Open Journey is actually an open source mid journey trained model that you can take and download and drop directly into your local hosted version of stable diffusion using automatic 1111. It's super simple to do. All you have to do is go over to Hugging Face. I'll drop a URL down below and you can search for Open Journey. And you can see in the model section, there are a number of different models that come up. So you can try different ones out. This happens to be the one from Prompt Hero that I've been using for the past couple days. So simply download the checkpoint file for this and then go over into your models directory inside of your Stable Diffusion install and simply drop this in there. It couldn't be any simpler than that. The other cool thing about this website is you can search for other so we'll say mid journey and you can see there are a whole bunch of different models that you can train for that so if you go to the model section we'll just go ahead and click enter here you can see there are 21 different data sets just for mid journey alone pretty awesome go ahead and test some out i've got a discord channel set up now so hit up that link and let me know some of your results maybe you found a model that's even better than the one i'm testing so once you've got that checkpoint file installed and you've restarted your automatic 1111 ui let's jump in and see what some of the results of this new model are and to do that i'm going to head over to a couple of prompt sites that i found that have some mid journey style prompts the first one we're going to check out is creative indie this site's pretty cool because they actually have a list of 644 mid journey prompts. So most of these you'll be able to drop right into automatic 1111 and get some pretty similar data out of it. So you can see a few of these examples here and they have the prompt and then the results over here. Let's see what I came up with from a couple of my own test prompts. Up in this stable diffusion checkpoint in the upper left hand corner, you're gonna see this drop down box that's where you select the model that you're using for automatic 1111. In this case, Midjourney V4 checkpoint is selected. So I am using the Midjourney model for this. My prompt is a surreal underwater world in the style of HR Geiger. I don't have a, a negative prompt in here. My sampling method, I went with DPM plus plus 2M Keras. Sampling steps. So this is the number of times that the AI model, the neural network, iterates over the image to improve the quality. So I did crank this all the way up to 150. I just wanted to see how much detail we could get out of this. And then I did the high res fix and I used an ESRGAN 4X upscaler. This just increases the resolution of the image from 512 by 512, which is kind of the default, to 1024 by 1024. Batch size went with one and batch count 16 so that we have 16 images in total that are generated. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. You can see these came back, they're really cool looking. It's almost like uh, pencil line art, the highly intricate details of all these images. And I think it just, it's really fascinating the way that it came back with this style. That one's pretty cool. And so this was the first example prompt that I went through. 
I'm already kind of excited by this point, right? You're starting to see that, okay, this can generate some pretty cool stuff. So I went from that to this scene. So this is a prompt, a historical epic battle scene in the style of Frank Franzetta. And you'll notice a pattern here. Oftentimes what you'll end up doing is you select an artist in the prompt, and that'll start to kind of stylize the generated images in the style of that artwork. So you can get back some really specific detailed images that way. So let's take a couple looks at these. And you can already see these are definitely epic battle scenes. Holy cow, the, the intricate detail on these, again, kind of blows you away. Wow. Some of these are pretty insane looking. I can't even believe that. And for this one, really the only changes I made, again, I said use the same upscaler. I used the same high res fix, ranked up the sampling steps to 150. Same sampling method, everything else. Nothing really changed there. Really cool result. And then the third one I did from that website was this, a steampunk airship in the style of Jules Verne. I must have been going for something where I just wanted those really highly intricate details because as you can clearly see, every single one of these images was kind of heading in that direction. Very cool stuff. Now, here's another awesome tip. There's a bunch of websites that have various different methods of generating prompts. They help you kind of step through the prompt building process, because that's honestly how you get the most out of stable diffusion is by having a good prompt. One of those websites is Prompt Hero. Prompt Hero is really cool because they actually have this entire section on the best open journey prompts. And that's what we're using for this. This is open journey. You can see up here in the menu, they have mid journey, chat GPT, stable diffusion. So you can go through and you can start scrolling through some of these really cool images that are generated. And then you can pull one of these up Let's say this one, for example, and it'll actually tell you the prompt. It'll give you the resolution, the seed, the number of steps, even the sampling method that was used. And you can just take this information and you can plug it directly into automatic 1111 and you should be able to get back a similar result to this. So I went ahead and did that with a couple of prompts I found on their website. This one I thought was really cool. It's highly detailed robot. And so we dropped that in. You can see the full prompt here, full body cyborg, full length portrait, detailed face, symmetric, steampunk, cyberpunk, cyborg, intricate, detailed. You get the point, right? It's very intricate and highly detailed. This one does have a negative prompt. So you want to get rid of things like blurry, fuzzy, bad anatomy, disfigured. Again, crank, crank the sampling steps up to 150. This time I did not do the high res fix, but I did do a slightly larger height. I did 768 pixels. And this is some of the stuff that it came back with. And you can see that it's overall very similar to the style that was shown up on the website. So this is cool because if you're looking for a specific style, you can find a website that has some prompts and using that, you can get to a place where you have a pretty good representation of what you were going after with a little bit less effort. And then from here, you can go back and you can just start to refine the prompt and you can refine the details of some of these images until you get exactly what you're after. I thought that was a cool one. Next up, I went with this prompt. I thought this was uh, just a stunning image. It, it almost had a photorealistic photography feel to it. So you can see here the prompt, mid-journey mid journey V4 style, medium length, white hair, young South Korean girl. So this whole long prompt. And then we've also got our negative prompt over here. Similar thing, didn't really change any other settings other than the height and width. So let's see what this came back with. And you can see it's sort of mixed results, right? So this one was just a little off to me. I don't know about the wisp of hair right down the middle of her face, but you know, that's kind of interesting. Obviously this one has multiple faces and I wonder if the face fix feature would actually get rid of that, unsure. Again, another one where there seemed to be a uh, doubling up of the bodies or body parts. Uh, but I did think this one was actually pretty good out of the results set. It was a very highly detailed picture, and I thought it came back very nice. So there you have it. It's basically like having a free version of Mid Journey right there on your home Windows PC. Hopefully that helps some of you out. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this type of content. Join me in the Discord. Let me know what you've been generating. I want to see some of your images. We'll talk soon. Thanks so much.